Well, hi there. Have you decided that you want to get that terminal degree in nursing but don't know whether to choose a DNP or a PhD? Well, this is the video for you, so stick around because I'm going to talk about all the things that you really want to know, like what are your job prospects with each, what are the salaries, what are the differences, what are the programs like, how long will it take you to get there, and what are the advantages of both? Let's jump into it. there. This is your academic nurse, Tracy. Thank you so much for watching my channel today. Let's talk about this. So DNP or PhD, it's a big question. So many people want to know which road to take or which path to take and how to get there. Let's talk about it. If you've started investigating DNP and PhD programs, you undoubtedly have been on several websites and the same type of description is repeated over and over again in that same academic tone. Well, let's break all that down and figure out what all that really means. To further confirm confuse the situation, you might even see people with the different degrees working in the same position. How is that a thing? How does that work? Well, let's talk about all of that. While there are areas of crossover between the two degrees, there are very specific skill sets that each degree will prepare you for. So let's learn about those. Both the PhD and the DNP are terminal degrees, and both are terminal degrees in nursing. However, the PhD, the Doctor of Philosophy, has long been the standard terminal degree for any field, while the DNP, the Doctor of Nursing Practice, actually belongs to the profession of nursing. We see many examples of this in other professional doctorates. Examples of non-PhD terminal degrees in other fields are DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, MD, Medical Doctor, DO, Doctor of Osteopathy, JD, Doctor of Jurisprudence, DDS, Doctor of Dental Surgery, DMD, Doctor of Medical Dentistry, and the list goes on and on. Over the years, the profession of nursing has offered various doctoral degrees in nursing, with some examples being ND, DNS, DNSC. However, in 2008, some of the very first DMP degrees received accreditation at their universities. The programs may have opened sooner, but the first accreditations were awarded in 2008, that making the DMP the newest kid on the block. Since those first programs were accredited in 2008, the DMP has taken off, and at the time of this recording, the AACN fact sheets on DNP stated that there were over 357 active DMP programs, 106 more in the works. That's an astounding number of doctoral programs. The DNP really has taken over and changed the landscape in the terminal degree business of nursing. With the push for DMP as practice entry for APRNs, the DMP really has actually increased significantly. I did another video of that and I'll link to that down in the description. Also, you can click on this card, this card, this card, wherever the card shows up on these things. I don't know how that works. It talks all about the difference between MSN and DNP entry for nurse practitioners. So, so the trend for DNP enrollment increases is actually quite concerning in some fields and some areas of nursing because the PhD has also experienced a decline at the same time that the DNP has had a rapid increase. In fact, since 2013, PhD enrollment has been steadily declining, as you can see in this graph. Over the last 10 years, enrollments and graduations have also been pretty steady in the PhD without a whole lot of growth, but also without massive decline. That's a good indicator. However, the exponential growth in the DMP and the push for APRN DMP entry to practice leaves some wondering if the PhD will take a hit because of that. Here, let's talk about how the DMP functions and how the PhD functions. In order to understand the differences between the degrees, we need to dive in a little deeper and see what skill sets each degree equips the learner to do and what the differences are. As you may already know, there are several types of PhDs. I have nursing colleagues with PhDs that are in other areas. For example, instructional design, higher education, adult education. It's almost endless because there is no way for me to really cover any other type of PhD a nurse may earn. I'm going to stick to those PhDs in nursing for the purposes of this video. The PhD in nursing prepares nurse scientists to engage in research and in the generation of new knowledge. The DMP prepares nursing clinical scholars to engage in translational and implementation science with a focus on quality improvement and leadership. Either degree may prepare a nurse for educating or mentoring new nurses or nursing students. Let's talk about the differences in curriculum. So the PhD in nursing curriculum is typically focused on research methods, statistics, analysis, grant writing, and theory. Of note, PhD curricula and foci in specialty areas 
can vary significantly as these programs are not based on AACN essentials and are not subject to nursing education accreditation. But don't let that fool you. These programs are super rigorous and you would be in for a very, very rigorous in-depth education. The PhD can take four to seven years and culminates in a dissertation. Some PhD programs offer stipends, tuition benefits, scholarships, and other incentives. The DMP curriculum, on the other hand, is usually centered around translation and implementation of science, quality improvement, leadership, micro and macro systems, health economics and finance, and informatics. The length of the DMP program can vary between two and four years, depending on whether or not the student is full-time, part-time, post-BSN, or post-MSN. A scholarly project is the culminating experience for the DMP, and these degrees are subject to the AACN Essentials, as well as accreditation. As far as the setting is concerned, either the PhD or the DMP can be in person or online. The PhD, however, is, is found more often in the brick and mortar setting with some hybrid and some online. Of course, the pandemic has changed a lot of this, but typically the DMP is either completely online or partially online. And those experiences can vary with a couple of different options, including full and part-time. Now, if you are looking for an online program, I did a video about that that called Before You Choose, five must know tips about online programs. And again, I will link that in the description below and click a card again, wherever it shows up in these things, I don't really know, but you can click the card to get more information about that because you'll find out all about how to find out if the programs are accredited, if there are any issues, reputation issues, costs, all of those really important things that you need to know. If you're finding value in this content so far, please be sure to click that like button below. It's super helpful. Also drop me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are about DNP or PhD. Which direction are you headed? Do you have any questions about that? would love to have a dialogue about that. Okay, let's talk about jobs. So where can you work as a DNP or a PhD? A PhD prepared nurse may work in multiple settings, including a research setting, an academic setting, a hospital setting. I even have a friend who worked for the NIH. The DNP prepared nurse, however, typically works in the clinical setting. So that nurse will typically work in a hospital environment or in a clinic setting. Again, I've had some that work for governmental agencies and I've known many, many DMPs prepared nurses, including myself, who also work in academia. Speaking of working in academia, I have a bit of a soapbox moment here. Recently, I was doing, well, in fact, doing research for this very episode or this very video. I ran across a couple of blogs and many descriptions on websites for colleges of nursing that had PhD programs and some that had both PhD and DMP. And many times I found the descriptions of what the job prospects are quite stale. And in fact, sometimes a little exclusive. And what do I mean by that? Well, many even came right out and said DNP does not pair a person, a nurse, to be in academia, that PhD is the only route. Well, of course, I am a DNP and I am in academia and I have reached all the way up to Senior Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, so I can tell you that that statement is just absolutely not true and misleading. The PhD prepared nurses are absolutely suited for academia and mentoring students as well as those DNP prepared nurses. We need those DNP prepared clinical nurses to teach those clinical courses, especially those that are current and relevant in practice. And lest we forget, we have to have nurses that have that are APRN prepared to teach those APRN tracks. Well, with the AACN pushing us toward a DNP as entry to practice, there's only going to be DNP prepared nurses to teach. So if you are running across that kind of information, I want you to consider two things. Number one, one, it's just not accurate. But number two, there still is a little bit of a hierarchy in some schools or colleges of nursing. If you're considering academia for a career, make sure that you look into what those places are that you might want to work for one day and find out what kind of practices do they have as far as their DNP colleagues. Are they eligible for promotion or tenure? Super important information to know. Also, if you're considering a DNP program, you might want to look at the makeup of your faculty before you go. If you're in a college or considering a college or school that doesn't support DMPs in academia, 
you might wanna consider that before spending your money there. Okay, let's move on. So let's talk about salary. According to nursingprocess.org, the average salary for a DNP prepared nurse is about $105,000, and the average salary for a PhD prepared nurse is about $99,000. Now this doesn't consider years worked and that sort of thing. So, and also it doesn't consider the fact that many of the DNP prepared nurses are APRNs. That also has an effect on the total compensation of those advanced practice nurses. Also, these types of information gathering tools really rely heavily on self-report through surveys. So it's a little difficult, plus without the disaggregation of really putting things into different buckets saying this is a APRN and a DMP or an FMP and a PhD. Those two things can make a PhD prepared nurse who's a scientist and a PhD prepared nurse who also is a practicing nurse practitioner or CRNA or one of the other APRNs, nurse midwife or CNS, then and those definitely are going to have different salaries, so it's hard to really compare these. But according to nursingprocess.org and many other sources that I looked at, the DNP prepared nurse has a slightly higher salary than a PhD prepared nurse. Having said that, PhD nurses in academia with a track record and that are funded can earn a much higher salary than that. So now that we know all that, we know what the differences are, we know the differences in the types of programs, we know the differences in curriculum, how long it's going to take, and the salary outlook, which one do you choose? Okay, well, this is the question. So why choose which one? Well, this really comes down to you. You need to define your why. Why do you wanna do this? Do you want to answer those burning questions out there? And maybe nursing scientist or a PhD is the best route for you. Do you wanna continue working in the clinical setting? Or do you wanna teach in academia someday in one of the APRN roles? Then perhaps the DMP is definitely the way to go. Is your heart in clinical practice and implementing quality improvement initiatives that lead to better patient outcomes, then maybe the DMP is a natural fit for you. Do you want a career in academia? Well, as I've already said, you heard my soapbox moment. That one's a little bit more tricky, but really either one can lead to a career in academia. You just have to be mindful of those things that I mentioned earlier. Bottom line here, find a nurse that has this degree that you're looking for and find back to find two or three and talk to them, have a conversation. Ask them, what's it like to be a DMP working in academia? What's it like to be a nursing scientist? How do you go about getting funded? What does that look like? Like, what does your life look like? What does your work balance life look like? All of those things are important. Ask all the questions. What do they love? What keeps them up at night? What's their career outlook like? Make sure you ask all the things because you need to know. Gather as much information as possible before you make this decision. All right, my nursing friends, thank you so much for watching this video and for coming with me on this journey through the academic nurse. If you're finding value in this, please click that like button wherever it shows up. Click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to continue to make more content for you. Also, I wasn't kidding earlier. Drop me a comment below so we can have a conversation. I love to dialogue with my nursing colleagues out there and find out what you're thinking about, what's going on with you, what current trends are, and how you engage in this content. So please drop me a line. Also, don't forget to go over to theacademicnurse.com and see what I'm up to over there. You can find links to my latest blogs and all the things. Drop me a line. If you have any questions, you can just comment. You can email me at info at theacademicnurse.com comment on this video, all the things. I answer all the things. Of course, you can follow me on social. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Until next time, this is your academic nurse saying bye.